Hello and welcome to this online presentation um, in which we'll discuss uh, randomized controlled trials and the critical appraisal of randomized controlled trials. So here we have the evidence pyramid um, and as usual as we see up the top we have our randomized control trial uh, followed by our cohort study, case control study, case series, case reports and ideas and opinions down the bottom. So th the reason that we have randomized control trials up the top um, is that they are the only study um, in which we can uh, control for the four main biases in control trials, that being selection, performance, attrition and detection bias. Um, if we look at cohort studies, um, we can control for performance, attrition and detection bias, um, but not um, selection bias. Um, and likewise for, for case control studies, um, the, the manner in which we control uh, the selection of uh, patients um, and the uh, assessment of uh, outcomes and exposures um, can be uh, compromised to some extent. So randomized controlled trials are basically intervention studies, that is we are actually intervening um, and um, uh, in, in some way uh, to see whether or not the intervention that we're giving to participants uh, changes the outcomes, um, be it a disease or behavior. So in this example, we've got um, patients with um, headache um, and we're going to uh, identify and perform a randomized control trial in which we allocate patients to either receive uh, Panadol or, or Nurofen um, and follow them up to identify whether or not uh, their pain has been reduced down the track. So experimental or, or intervention studies uh, are measured by comparing the outcomes of the group um, in which we've intervened um, that being the experimental or intervention group um, and comparing, at, comparing that to a group that haven't received the uh, experiment, um, that being the control or comparison group. Obviously there's um, a high uh, level of uh, ethics around these studies um, and, and as we've um, discussed in, a, in another um, online presentation, uh, we had uh, one famous RCT in which patients um, who had osteoarthritis of the knee were either randomised to receive actual surgery, um, that being an arthroscope over the knee, um, as opposed to a, uh, a sham surgery in which they were um, uh, put under general anaesthetic um, um, and led to believe that they actually had received uh, the surgery themselves. All RCTs are prospective in their follow-up, that is they move forward in time um, and uh, for all RCTs um, as a result we are able to compare the incidence. A randomised control trial um, as mentioned is the best type of clinical trial and we, um, we, we label it the gold standard uh, for, for studying cause and effect. Um, uh, like I said it's uh, tightly controlled uh, within the study uh, to control for for, the, for those four biases um, and, and as a such um, by controlling for those four biases it, it is a or it is the, the cornerstone of, of evidence-based practice however one of the, I guess of the, the flaws of having such a tightly um, controlled trial um, is that its generalizability um, may not be that that wide so that's sort of the fine balance that we um, have between um, performing an RCT um, and using its results to generalize so a randomized control trial, um, as the name suggests, um, involves randomizing patients or participants uh, to either the uh, intervention or the control uh, arm so that patients have an equal chance of being in, in either of those two groups. So hopefully um, during the randomization process, um, as we've uh, so previously discussed, um, it is blinded um, in terms of um, the allocation process um, is adjusted for in, in terms of blinding um, so that the only difference between the two groups is that one group receives the intervention um, and the other group uh, does not receive, uh, receive the intervention, they receive a placebo or in some cases no treatment um, whatsoever. So in this slide we're just going to uh, demonstrate um, uh, 
the, the randomized control trial. Um, so uh, as we've seen, it's a prospective study. Um, that is the direction of inquiry is forward in time. Uh, we have our population from which we recruit a, a specific sample using our um, inclusion and exclusion criteria. And once again, sometimes one of the flaws with, with the randomized control trials is that um, investigators can make the um, inclusion criteria very, very specific. So once again, it generalizes upon the um, uh, applicability, apl sorry, applicability of the results to the wider population. Um, so it's just something to consider there in terms of um, looking at the inclusion and exclusion criteria of, um, of any studies. Once uh, we've identified our sample, we uh, randomize them either to the um, intervention group or the control group. So in this case, we're looking at uh, vitamin C versus no vitamin C. Um, as our placebo and then following them up um, for a set period of time whether it be short duration you know, one week one month uh, uh, three months uh, or whether it be uh, a longer dura duration for those particular outcomes and hopefully at, at this stage when we're assessing the outcomes the investigators are blinded in the sense that they don't know whether the participants were allocated to the intervention or control groups at that stage. So just a, a few things in terms of randomizing. Um, the the randomization process um, needs to be unbiased in terms of allocating participants to uh, to to the uh, to the two groups, um, and, and this can be um, performed through a few ways um, in terms of randomization. So simple randomization or simple random allocation. Um, is, is just, as the name suggests, um, simply allocating participants to one group or another group using something like a, a flip of the coin, um, a, a generation of a, um, a random numbers from a, a, a computer program such as Excel. Um, so when a patient comes in, um, the number that they're given um, uh, identifies whether or not they uh, are, are going to be randomised to one group or another group. Uh, we can have uh, systematic um, allocation. Um, so um, where um, yeah, every sixth person is allocated to one group or another group. Um, or we could have stratified allocation where we stratify patients uh, according to different characteristics. So uh, according to age, so 18 to 25, 26 to 35 year olds, um, or, or any other sort of um, strata that we, uh, we may be interested in in the study. So blinding, um, uh, another key feature of the randomised controlled um, blinded study um, is where um, hopefully uh, neither the participant uh, nor the investigator um, uh, is aware of uh, which trial group that participants are in. So in terms of um, implementation, um, we're, we're looking at trying to control for performance bias. That is that the um, patient nor the uh, investigator um, does not know whether uh, the patient is receiving the intervention or the um, placebo or, or comparison uh, uh, treatment. Um, and at the outcome stage, um, we're, we're trying to blind the investigators um, to uh, reduce the chances of detection bias occurring. That is um, uh, the manipulation of results according to um, uh, which group the patients have been allocated to. So the main advantages of RCT, so like I said, they're, they're the gold standard um, in, in terms of um, uh, epidemiological studies um, and they have the less risk associated um, with them than any other type of study because we can control for, for all those factors of uh, selection, performance, attrition and detection bias. Um, as a result, they provide a very strong relationship uh, between um, cause and effect. Um, and they can be used for multiple uh, outcomes. Um, so you, uh, quite often for, a, for an RCT, there is not just one primary outcome that we're interested in, but a variety of um, secondary outcomes uh, as well. Limitations of RCTs, um, they can often be uh, quite expensive uh, to do. Um, if we want to be able to generalise the results to the wider community, uh, we would require a large sample size and you know, potentially at, at multiple sites. Um, obviously ethical issues uh, can be an issue and depending on the, the type of um, uh, disease or, or intervention or outcome that we're interested in, uh, the follow-up time and, and the potential for dropouts during that period, um, i.e. attrition bias, may also be a, a factor in, um, uh, in the study itself.